Hey everyone, this is Zach, the broker of Zach Taylor Real Estate. We've added over 200 agents in two years, and today I wanna to help make your life easier as a real estate agent and share with you 20 potential lead generation ideas for you, so that way you can still be successful in this ever-changing real estate market. We know the market's been shifting, we know interest rates have passed over 7%, and that's priced out some of our clients and we've lost opportunities. Well, today I wanna to help you get more opportunities by focusing on the demographics or the types of people that will always have to buy or sell, no matter what, no matter what rates are doing, no matter where homes are selling or how much, or if prices go down, it doesn't matter. These different lead sources probably always have to sell. And if I can share these ideas with you, you can better formulate a plan to get in front of them and still have a successful business or take your business to the next level. And so I was watching a interview with Alex Ramosi on YouTube and he really broke down lead generation into four different categories. And I'll put that chart on the screen. And it breaks down either people you know or people you don't know. And from there, it's broken down into one-on-one. So warm reach outs for people you do know. So this is your sphere of influence. This is your friends. This is your family. This is people in similar hobby groups. People you don't know one-on-one -on -one is cold reach outs. Could be door knocking, cold calling. You're trying to expand and have more people know who you are. People you know, one to many, is social media, posting content. It's a high leverage activity that you can post one piece of content and have a thousand views on a video. People you don't know, one to many, is gonna be your paid ads, your Google advertising, your Facebook ads, running some sort of marketing campaign. And so with these four different categories, when you're marketing to these 20 different lead sources that I'm about to give you in a second, it's important to realize that these are all different levers. And they kind of go in order of increasing cost as well. So warm reach outs, one-on-one, -on -one, people you know. These are people that are probably in your phone contacts already. You can pull them up, you can call them, it's free. People you don't know one-on-one, -on -one, cold reach outs, you're door knocking, free. Cold calling, maybe you just have to buy a cheap list and you can start ringing the phones of people. So it's a very inexpensive lead generation activity. One to many people you know, posting content, again, that should be free. Your Facebook posts, making videos, making a YouTube channel, all free. And people you don't know one to many, paid ads, this is gonna be your most expensive because a lot of times we don't know how to properly market and pay for advertising. And so some of that cost is going to be us learning how to do this uh, effectively. However, it could be a good lever down the road as you're trying to increase your business. And so understanding those four buckets, let's jump into the 20 different lead sources that could be available no matter what happens in this market. Number one, probate. People are sadly, they always are gonna pass away and they're gonna leave their property to somebody else. That's a probate situation. Think of county records. Think of buying a list of these. Divorce records, who could you go to? Maybe divorce attorneys. Eviction records. Landlords could have people that need to get evicted and now that's a pain point. That's a sensitive topic is I just had to evict this person and maybe you can come in, reach out and see if they no longer wanna be a landlord and sell that property. Older homeowners with two story homes. Think about this, they're getting older, maybe their primary bedroom's on the second floor, so they're gonna have to sell and downsize. You could reach out to assisted living facilities on people that are looking to get in to those facilities. You could also pull this from CRS tax data with people that have lived in their home for 20 plus years. Uh, next could be tax liens. So again, this could be the property assessor's office, but people that have not been paying their taxes. Expired listings, using the MLS, using a service provider like Reddix, finding homes that in the past just didn't sell. Well, was that maybe the past agent's fault, not marketing it properly, was it priced too high? Reach out to those people. People that inherited properties, kind of similar to probate, but you inherited some sort of property. Cash buyers, you can look on the MLS, CRS tax data, you can look for different lead source providers, list source, there's a ton out there. Look for people that are buying properties in cash, maybe even they look like rental properties and see if they want your help to find other things available on the market. Negative equity, are people upside down in their home? We've seen people purchase maybe in the past two years, they have a job relocation, and all of a sudden they are trying to sell their house, but they bought at the peak uh, in the past. So they're underwater right now. Code violations, again, getting with the city, go, getting with the local municipality, people that are having code violations currently. Tax delinquent, look for those. Are they not paying their property taxes? High equity homeowners, so people that have lived there for a while, they've paid down their mortgage for a while, maybe they wanna cash out, maybe they wanna retire, move down to Florida, something like that. Uh, you could also have free and clear properties, people that don't have a mortgage at all, completely paid for. For sale by owners, again, people that want to make the most amount of money, maybe they're listed for free on Zillow, you can create a plan around getting in front of these people and offering effective solutions. 
uh, absentee owners, either in state or out of state. So these are people that own a property, but they just don't live there for whatever reason. Could be landlords, could be a second home. So gather lists of absentee owners and reach out to these people. Pre-foreclosures or foreclosures, either or. These are people that are behind on their payments or the bank's about to take their property. And if you can come in before the bank takes the property and get it sold, you provide a win-win situation. People that are getting married. Think about when two households come together and they get married, oftentimes they might wanna buy one property or one, one person wants to move in with the other and they wanna sell off another residence. So could you get in front of wedding venues? Is there other sources of married people or people getting married that you could create an effective marketing plan for? And finally, think about growing families. Those that are married or not married, but now they're having kids. Well, when you have kids, you might need extra bedrooms, might need a bigger house, could lead to them selling one house and moving up to another house. So think of all these different sources. These are consistent demographics of people that will always be buying and selling properties no matter the market conditions. And if you can effectively create a marketing plan using those four buckets that I've talked about previously, do you already know these people? Are there people in your life that fit these type of categories? Are there people you don't know? And you can buy lists of these people, a couple hundred bucks and start creating a game plan to follow up with these people. Cold call them, maybe door knock, maybe send them a text, maybe send them on an email campaign, maybe run targeted ads around them. So you can put them into the different marketing buckets as far as lead generation. And when you do this and you focus on those that will always sell and you do a phenomenal job, they will continuously refer you to other fan, uh, family and friends and that will continuously expand your sphere of influence. So any agent can be successful no matter the market conditions. It might be time to get back to the basics, Focus on those we know are going to buy or sell, and you can take your real estate business to the next level. Subscribe to the channel if you found this information valuable. It really helps us out with growing. And if you have any other topics you want me to cover, comment down below, and I will cover them in the future videos. And until next time, I'll see you later.